Hey guys, wow, 10,000 subscribers. Probably should do a video to celebrate, I guess. So here we have a PlayStation 4. Uh, model number is uh, uh, CUH1002A. Uh, apparently, I've had a look at this before, but I'm calling uh, rubbish on that because uh, it's got 10 years worth of dust in it. So maybe they're trying to pull a fast one and say that we've looked at it before, but uh, they've actually got a second unit or a mate's unit that's uh, got an issue. But anyway, it doesn't turn on. I've already removed the covers and I was vacuuming out all the dust and I thought I should turn the camera on. <laughs> so I've got a bit of a clean up. Uh, and yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm about to uh, remove the power supply. So we will do that. So thus secured, the power supply is, um, there's a couple of prongs that come down into the motherboard which can be a little tight sometimes, so you'll see this end lifts up quite freely, this end's a bit tight, just pull the plug out there and then get your finger underneath in, in the hole and just give it a lift while, while sort of lifting the other side and uh, here they pop up nice and easily. I don't know if the problem is the power supply or other, so I guess what we could do is plug this in and see if we've got our standby voltages coming out of the plug there, because uh, the motherboard won't do anything if it's uh, not partially on to, to activate the rest of it. Uh, the prongs that come into here, uh, that's for the, I believe, 12 volt high current for the rest of the system which is only on once you uh, turn the unit on. Just clean this with a vacuum. So much dust in here, I wouldn't be surprised if this has just failed from overheating. But uh, anyway, we'll just plug it in and see what's coming out, if anything. So watch your fingers, of course, if you're going to go plugging it in. Um, I think just looking at the layout, this is probably the secondary uh, rectifiers on the heatsink there but even though when it's plugged in you don't want to touch it accidentally and find out that it's the main uh, switching side of things so there's a few pins in here and I'm just going to probe each one uh, I'm gonna see if I can find a ground first uh, one of these will be ground so we can do a resistance measurement between these uh, and that heatsink for example which is probably ground um, if it is the output, I'm pretty sure it's the output, but um, actually, no, we could use we could use one of those two to find the ground because uh, we're 12 volts, but it's um, I don't think it's 12 volts on here, so we'll be able to go from here to one of these, and they should connect through. The other one won't connect through because it's I think it's only like maybe three or five through here, uh, control signals and whatnot. Um, what do we got here? that does supply 4.7, I'm just reading the top of the case, uh, 4.7 and 12 according to this. So we should see at least at least 4.7 on one of those pins there. Oh, I know how we can do it. Let's get our console, go resistance, and we'll go uh, the metal shield to one of the prongs that's sticking up. Uh, yeah, we've got the resistance there. Which go away. Um, the caps charge up in there. And then the other prong to the metal shield. And uh, there we go, that's our ground pin. So it's the, the uh, prong on the inside, not the one by the outside. The one toward the inside of the machine. So we will probe that one and check all the other little pins. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. So it appears we have a dead power supply. 
trying to remember the last time I opened one of these. Uh, I think they were just clipped together. Now keep in mind it's not operating so this main capacitor here could be charged so when we crack it open you don't want to fumble it and get your fingers across the pins because there could be uh, close to 400 odd volts uh, waiting to entertain you. So we just need to find clips that hold it. Where's the seam? Uh, there's one there. Okay, I can kind of see one down in there. So let's start at that end. bit of tape that goes across there probably would have been easier to cut that first instead of trying to break it through stretching and again there's a bit of tape at that end so that one go little clip beside the uh, socket. this end like there's a screw there but there's not but there is <laughs> down by there there's a screw great if your gut instinct says something's not quite right you're probably right now it'll let go another screw down in here he says lying it down putting force on it and pushing all the clips back together that we just did <laughs> here we go like that uh, nothing immediately obvious there so that's good Let's get the vacuum again. Uh, now if we flip this, she's just going to fall out there. And there we go. Checking the state of charge on our main caps there. What have we got, if anything? We've got zero there. There's a couple of big caps in there, so just make sure you check them both. Zero there. I don't think this thing's even firing up the primary... How's the state of our fuse? Listen for the beep. Blowing. Cool. Why is it blowing? Where's our bridge? <laughs> There's our bridge rectifier up here. So, quite often the cause of a blown fuse is a shorted bridge. Uh, and it looks like we've got positive and negative on the outside pins because there's four in a line and AC on the center pins so let's uh, probe across there the top one there that's our positive so we go AC to positive should be one the other AC pin to positive should be one so you see a half a volt on the meter there and then swap them and we should have half a volt AC to negative and half a volt AC to negative. So nothing wrong with the bridge rectifier there. These are probably, what are these, transient surge 
Uh, no, there's a diode backward ass diode there. Cool. Okay. What sort of uh, resistance have we got on the main filter cap? And I'd be curious about that inductor down in, in there too, that green one. If that's uh, happy or not. But uh, yeah, as I, <laughs> as I said, uh, be careful of touching that plate. So this is the heat sink of that, that was open through the case, through the back of the case there. That is actually the primary side, as is that one. So it looks like there's a couple of uh, things going on here. Um, but uh, this is the, these heat sinks are the output uh, rectifiers uh, and our output capacitors. So yeah. <laughs> Don't always assume that uh, they're safe. So I'm going to measure the resistance across our cap for that one there. And we have extremely high resistance. It doesn't even, even, yeah, not even a partial charge up or anything. Okay, let's swap leads and check the other one. There we go. Not doing a hell of a lot, but there's no short there, that's for sure. Yeah. Maybe they're in, are they in parallel? Let's have a look. It appears they are in parallel. All right, so that little green inductor behind that heat sink there, I'll just see if that's got any resistance to it. Just to see if there's been some kind of surge through here. Let me get my leg on there, one on there, one on there. Have a nosy at that. Oh uh, yeah, so that's half an ohm, which is pretty much the lead resistance, I think. <laughs> um, it's fine. What's it across, though? It takes uh, it's a negative of that cap over to one of the switching FETs. It does look like it's gotten a little bit warm around there. So you can see a discoloration of the board around these pins. It's not really badly discolored, but it's it shows that it's being warm, and these are they do run warm. <laughs> um, I'm just going to buzz over these fets then and see uh, what is going on there. Um, we may get. A short a, a reading depending on if it's across how, how it's across the windings of those transformers but uh, uh, it's going to be uh, gate gate drain gate source drain source that's fine gate drain gate source drain source it's not shorted I expect them to be shorted or blown open um, now the other that's just a diode there. It's only got two legs on it. And that appears to be shorted. And then we've got... Uh... Oh no, hang on. Ah, I probed the wrong one. <laughs> okay. No. Here we go. That's fine. And gate drain, gate source, drain source, shorted. Okay. Is it shorted or is it just something in the circuit? And of course it is the one that uh, seems to have experienced the most heat. We have isolated the pins and we'll test again. No, she's dead short. Dead short. Just drain source short. Um, not a gate drain or gate source short, which is kind of lucky, I guess, because it hasn't hopefully sparked over to the drive uh, side of things. So maybe we'll get away with just replacing a MOSFET. If we check, uh, this is the windings for the coil that this is switching. 
So if we go, where are we? Yeah, if we, what if we go, since this is the hot side, primary side, uh, negative, and uh, just check. So it is switching to ground, according to that. Uh, and I wonder if we have any issues on the... Uh, actually, that one is switching across that transformer. Okay. I think this is power factor correction. Because it doesn't go anywhere except back into itself. Uh, yeah, this is, I think this is power factor correction because over here we've got, uh, this would be our main 12 volt switching and this is probably our standby, our 4 volt one. And if I'm not mistaken, it does appear that... This uh, chip here is an all-in-one switching controller, uh, so that is our standby line, 5 volt, 4.7. Um, so yeah, it appears it's just power factor correction that's blowing out on this and taking the fuse with it. What are the odds that old Dave Jones had a TV with the same problem? Can't say I've seen this in a PlayStation before. Not that I don't, I don't get a lot of them, but yeah, of it, the power factor side of things blowing is not as common as the the main power supply itself. We'll take the uh, whole thing out and see if we can find a replacement. And we're going to have to take the heatsink with it because the screws through the back, and you can't get a screwdriver behind that transformer just to undo the nut. So that's a nuisance, but that's the way they decided to do it, I guess. So. I have to get the whole lot and the diode that's on on the other half of the heatsink here. Pry it off. Get it liquid and pry it off. Might be the easiest way of doing it. A little screwdriver under there. And a little bit of a lever. Pop back up. And then there's one on the middle over here as well. We're going to need to convince to come with us. Oh, okay. I managed to get the side one out enough. There we go. What is it? 24? Twenty four N sixty M two. So this thing has a Zena protected gate. So that would be protecting the gate drive circuitry, I guess, in the event of a a nasty failure. Um, I wouldn't want to put something else in there without a, or that didn't have a Zena protector gate, although it would probably be fine for another, I don't know, 10 years use? How old are these things? Um, but yeah, that's, that's about the only special thing about it. Uh, camera's playing up at the moment. Plenty of battery life, but it shuts off and hangs and stops recording by itself. <laughs> Anyway, see if I can dig up something like that. Or at least, I mean, we could probably throw in uh, another one without the Zena protection just to see if the thing works, and then we can order in the right one. All right, what I've done, I've um, got a fuse temporarily installed. And um, if we have a look over the other side, I've got... Uh, the diode in 
So the diode actually feeds everything else. So uh, yeah, the mains goes through the bridge rectifier um, and then through the diode uh, into the caps. So that has to go back in there, but we've got the MOSFET out and uh, we will plug it in and see what happens. Uh, I like to do that in case things go astray. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, but you know, you don't need a, a, a fuse that's all glass to to fire up and startle you. Well, these ones don't because they're all uh, encased in ceramic. So uh, let's plug it in. So far, no smoke. All right. And fuse looks intact still. Let's take a measurement. So I'm going to probe on what I believe to be a 4.7 rail. And we have 4.6. That's a good start. So I guess at this point what we can do is uh, it'll run without the power factor correction. So if we pop this into the into the machine we can at least see if the um, if the thing's going to run and uh, make sure there's no other problems with the console because there's no point really uh, fixing this if uh, the rest of it's uh, dead. Turn it on. No, oh, well, it came on and went off. Well, my guess is that it's probably monitoring the performance of the power factor correction, and as that's not functioning, it's shutting off. So I had a look out in the, in the junk room, and I have another whole complete unit. I do believe this does not function, but with any luck, that MOSFET is okay. Let's just double check this uh, fit is actually okay. Hmm. That looks alright for being in circuit. Alright, let's uh, test it here before we drag it over the TV. Uh, it'll either turn on or it won't. So, um, I've, I, I swapped the whole heatsink with the other diode on uh, over. It looked like it had done a lot less hours. There was just It was a lot cleaner looking and that, so I figured... Um, in case that other diode had been a bit stressed. So we've got a uh, complete heatsink with FET and diode on it. And uh, if I hit the button, hopefully you'll hear a relay click and stay on. And you'll see the old fan spin there if it does. So here we go. Aha! We have success! Now it's probably going to do this, it just turned off, and now it's just turned on again. So it's probably doing some kind of system restart. It might not have been shut down properly. The hard drive appears to be making noise. Got a white light on, which would normally be on top. <laughs> but uh, it's just done another shutdown with the white light still on. It's gone blue light. It might be applying some update or something. All right, let's let this do its thing. Then we'll move it to this TV and see what's going on. Okay, turn it on. And another one lives to see another day. So I hope you thought that was interesting. Power factor correction MOSFET death. Uh, seems to be contagious at the moment, but uh, there we are. 
thanks for watching catch you next time